Hello, and welcome to you, Friendship and Her Many Friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is our prayer that God has blessed you tremendously throughout this day, as well as this week. We thank God for you joining us today for another Dropping the Ship's Anchor moment. It is our hope that during these moments, we will provide you with weekly words of wisdom from the Word of God. As we look through the lens of Scripture today, it is our prayer that you will be encouraged, enlightened, as well as inspired by God's Word. Let's get into today's message. This verse that we have read to you today uh, is dealing with the time immediately following the conversion of Paul. Amen. It was there on the Damascus Road that uh, his life was dramatically and totally transformed. Amen. Paul is no longer persecuting the church, but he is now preaching the gospel and seeking to win souls for the glory of God. This, my friends, is a simple statement regarding the state of the church at that time, but it reveals great truth about every what every church should possess. Uh, it is often said uh, there are three things essential to a successful business, and they are location, location, and location. And I believe today, my brothers and sisters who are here with us, that there is a key for successful churches as well. And the, success, the key to a successful church is also location, location, location. For you see, that location is smack dab in the middle of where we are. Now, I know that we don't have access to the masses like some churches do, but I don't want you to miss the point that I am trying to make to us today. Uh, you see, the church, my friends, is not a building. Amen. We who are the saved of God, we who are the children of God, we are the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the called out ones. And the location of our hearts determines our success. You see, if our hearts are located in the center of God's will, we are in a prime location. And I want us to see with an open heart what great churches possess. Amen. As we continue our study on the church, I, I want to consider today this verse and the elements of great churches as we think on the thought what every church should possess. Uh, first in the text, we see that every church ought to uh, uh, possess an atmosphere of peace. In the beginning of the chapter, we see Saul, the great persecutor, has been converted. This, my friends, must have had an impact on the persecution of the churches, for our text reveals that the churches then had rest. That word rest uh, implies a sense of peace and prosperity. It was a time of great opportunity for them, my friends. Now, I have never experienced persecution coming to church, my friends, but an atmosphere of peace requires more than the absence of persecution. Amen. You see, today, many churches face no real conflict outwardly, but they are in turmoil and facing division inwardly. Uh, for, uh, my friends, a great church, one that is prosperous for Jesus Christ, must possess peace and harmony within the church. Uh, in other words, friends, uh, unity is found in an atmosphere of peace. For the word of God declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 10, I appeal to you, dear brothers and sisters, by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other. Let there be no division in the church. Rather, be of one mind united in thought 
and peace. You see, <clears throat> the division is not outside of the church. The division is not in the world. The division is inside of the church. The device of church, my friends, is not working to bring peace, love, and brotherhood to the world. The device of church is not seen out in the world ministering to the starving, diseased, and the lost masses of the world. The device of church is seen fuming and fighting. <clears throat> For you see, my friends, there are many conflicts in the church. There are always someone who is trying, my friends, to cause turmoil and division amongst God's people. And the division does not come from the outside. The division comes from the inside. And I want to tell you today, my friends, that when the church is fighting against one another, the church cannot stand because the word of God says, in Luke chapter 11, verse number 17, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to dissolution. And a house divided against a house falleth. You see, too often, my friends, the church is the center of controversy in the community and not the seat of God's power. Great churches are united in love, worship, and a vision for the future. We, my friends here at the ship, must remain committed to an atmosphere of peace. Most folks, my friends, whether you believe it or not, Deacon Hardy, most people don't enjoy conflict. Amen. And, and there is something wrong with the individual who does always want to see conflict and fighting and fuming going amongst God's people all the time. Well, you see, my friends, we must have peace if we are going to prosper. <coughs> the early church's success was greatly impacted by the unity of its members we may not always agree on everything but when the chips are down my brothers and sisters the people of God ought to stand together work together ride together and die together for you see God's church is to be a united church and united people uh, are so different can only be the direct result of the Lord's work in our lives. As always, we thank God for you joining us today and we hope that what you've heard has been a blessing to your soul and certainly that it will give you the encouragement that you need to help you to get through the rest of your week. We ask that you will continue to join us right here on Facebook Live as well as our YouTube channel every Friday evening at 7 p.m. for another anchor dropping moment here at the ship. And on every occasion that we are able to hear the word of God, let us always remember, listen well, learn well, live well. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you until we meet again. May God bless you and may he forever keep you is our prayer.